Hello everyone, my name is Alan and welcome to this three-part series on how to build a trommel for your gold mining wash plant. Now many of you have seen my other video and have asked me, how do I go about building this thing? So this video is dedicated for you. So if you haven't seen the other video, go to Alan's Gold Mining Trommel Wash Plant on YouTube. Just use the search engine, you'll find it. And take a look at it and uh, that way you'll have a better idea of what we're doing here today. So, and if you have any questions, go ahead and put them down in the comment section below and we'll be happy to answer them. Also, I know there's a lot of uh, do-it-yourselfers out there that have some really great ideas on how to build stuff. So if you have some comments you'd like to put down there and share, go ahead and put it down there in the comment section as well. And that way we can get a little dialogue going on with all those who are interested in building a trommel. It'll be a lot of fun. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I need to do is discuss the buckets. Now there are several manufacturers in the United States and not every bucket is created equal. There are many different designs and shapes and everything. These are obviously five gallon buckets US. Now the first one here is sold by Home Depot and it's a decent sized bucket. It costs about three bucks and uh, it has these little ribs on here for support but unfortunately you can see how easy it is for me to bend this thing. So really this bucket is not really ideal for uh, making a trommel and everything. So the next bucket is uh, made by Lowe's for about the same price. And as I push down on it, you can see it's a lot uh, firmer. It's a little bit more. And uh, it also has a little bit better rib system here. In fact, I'll bring it up to the camera. You can kind of see these little bitty trusses that are underneath here that help give this thing support. So this is what I made my original trommel with. Now since that trommel bill, I stumbled across these, this bucket at Walmart and it's really super rigid okay you see I put one of force on this thing and it's hardly bending at all so this is really an ideal uh, uh, bucket here and you can see the kind of the serrate trussing that's going on underneath this thing and that just gives it really good support and the other thing I like about that this bucket is the uh, space here makes it ideal if you're going to build a trommel it's going to sit on rollers or it's going to have a drive belt then this is really ideal for that. So this bucket is what we're going to use uh, for our system today. Oh, by the way, it costs like an extra buck, so about $4. So I suggest when, it, when you go out to get your buckets and everything, I suggest buying uh, at least, if you're going to do the upper trommel, buy about four buckets. And if you're going to do the dewatering trommel, buy about six to seven, okay? Actually buy one extra just in case you goof up, you got an extra spare bucket to uh, work with. So with that, let's look at some of the other supplies. Some of the other basic supplies are these uh, bolts and nuts. Uh, these are quarter 20, as you can see here, and also quarter inch washers. So you'll need some of these. I've just bought a whole big pack of them, so you have plenty to go around. Uh, the other thing too is that I, I suggest getting the standard size washer. Don't worry about getting the big fender washer type, because what I found that if, the, if you use the bigger washer on these buckets, they're round, and so you're trying to uh, put a big washer on there. What happens? It flattens out that area and actually distorts the plastic. So I found that actually the standard washer is really the best so that's what you need to do is just get a bunch of these uh, the other thing that you're going to need is some threaded rod so this is a quarter 20 threaded rod uh, and, and you can buy them in 12 inch lengths you can buy them in four foot or two foot lengths I found the best price believe it or not is going over into the uh, electrical section and you can buy a 10 foot piece of this for the same price as a four footer so if you're going to be building a, a wash plant plus the dewatering trommel uh, then I suggest go ahead and, and getting uh, the 10 footer and go ahead and cut them on into uh, 12, 12 inch segments okay now the other thing that you're going to need are the lids, okay? So if you're building uh, the upper trommel and uh, then you're also building the dewatering trommel, I suggest you buy four of these so you have plenty to go around. Uh, you can make it work with two and all that, but sometimes I just found it just easier to have a few of these extra uh, lids and everything to go with it, okay? So make sure they're the matching lids, all right? Now the other thing that you're going to need is the electrical conduit tubing, okay? And so this is a one inch tube, okay, and found on the electrical section, but it really isn't one inch. It's actually, uh, uh, it's actually an inch and one eighth outside diameter, actually inch and one eighth and about maybe uh, uh, three thousandths or whatever. And then the inside is just slightly larger than one inch, but we'll get into the details about how this gets all set up and everything with the bearings and stuff like that. So anyway, the important thing is to get a one inch steel conduit tubing. Okay, they come in 10 foot lengths here in the US, all right? 
And make sure when you do buy it that you roll it and the thing rolls perfectly around. If it's got any bend in it or whatever, reject it, find another one, okay? Really super important to get one that's going to spin as smooth as possible. And I know it's bumping around a little bit because i got some lumps on the desk here. But anyhow, uh, that's what you want. So, and then finally, uh, the main part of the screen part is uh, this uh, mesh screen. Now I have, uh, this is quarter inch. Now the reason why I choose quarter inch versus half inch are several reasons, okay? First of all, when you go to build your trommel, you don't want to have any slop in it. So what I like about this is that I can actually take these quarter inch nuts, or these uh, bolts, and slip them in here. It makes it real easy for... Uh, for uh, drilling and mounting, so therefore there's no slop. If you go with a half inch, obviously the squares are larger, so now you're going to need a larger washer. Now you're into the fender washer thing, and then you're going to have a lot of slop going on, and so you're not going to have a very rigid system, so I kind of prefer this. Now, I know that some of you want to use half inch uh, because you're worried about losing nuggets, but let me tell you, uh, I, at least in my situation, I have very, uh, very few uh, nuggets that are larger than quarter inch. So if I do have one larger than quarter inch, okay, and it ends out on the tailings pile, well, after the end of the day, I take my tailings pile and rake it out and I scan it with my metal detector. Because if there's a nugget larger at quarter inch or larger, my metal detector is going to scream. So I'm going to easily find it. So I'm basically concentrating on the stuff that's basically minus quarter inch. The other thing uh, about the two different screens, the half inch and quarter inch, this one here obviously has more wire per square inch or per square foot, okay, so it's stronger, okay. If you get the half inch, it's the same gauge wire, but uh, it's more flimsy, so it's not as, uh, as rigid, and we want to keep this as rigid as possible in our design. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next segment here. Next thing you need to do is build a jig. So I just made this out of uh, scrap wood that I had laying around in the garage. This is uh, made out of half inch particle board. Actually it was one big long piece and I actually drilled a hole here, one and a quarter inch hole and then cut it in half. It measures about 12 inches high, 7 inches across. And then I have a 2 by 4 here that's uh, pretty straight and it measures about 40 inches. And that gives you just plenty enough room to work with. So you can sit it down on the counter give you some stability while you're putting the uh, trauma together. And of course this cradles the 1 inch conduit pipe right here. And so we'll go ahead and mount our buckets on there and get ready to go. The next step is to remove the handle and we're going to mark our little places on the bucket. So we're just going to pop that out pop this out so we don't need this anymore. And if you know, as I mentioned earlier, these buckets have little molding marks. And I'll bring this up real close to the camera. You can kind of see this line here. Some are uh, not as easy to see as others. But if you notice that this line comes right down in the center of this truss, this little triangle shape. So that's a good landmark. And there happens to be four of these on the bucket. So this makes it really easy to uh, work with. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take our uh, Sharpie here and we're just going to mark about where this is so we have a rough idea. There we go. There we are. Okay. And then we're just going to go around the bucket looking for the other piece. You can kind of see, I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not, but there's the other one right there. Uh, here's another one. We've got all these marked. Good. And this is going to help us with uh, lining things up. Very good. All right, so now the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, this and we're going to draw a line uh, across here. Okay, you're just going to take your adjustable square, try to max it out as best you can. And what we're going to do is we're just going to lay it up against the bottom of this bucket. Like I said, this is a machine molding, so everything is pretty true, including the bottom surface. So we're just going to lay that up against there, kind of eyeball it a little bit, get it close to that mark, kind of subtract for the, the gap in our Sharpie. Okay, and so now we have this lined up. You can kind of see it from here. So we're just going to draw ourselves a line, and that's going to mark the bucket, because this will be critical when we start to do other measurements and everything. So we're just going to move it over to the next one, do basically the same thing, get it all nice and squared and straight, kind of eyeball it here, like so, draw the line, there we go, and move on to the other buckets. Now you're going to just do this to all, the, uh, all of, or at least the all two buckets anyway. Draw that, there we go, 
And one last one here, get that nice and straight. There we go, good. So now we have these lines that are drawn down the bucket, and you can kind of, I'll hold up the camera, you can kind of kind of eyeball it here. And so I hope I can get the camera just about the right angle. You can see how this line's pretty much going right here into the center of this uh, truss here where this little mark is. So we're pretty, uh, pretty darn close, okay? It may be off just like a, maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so, but they're all pretty close, and that's all we need to help us uh, do some alignments and everything. So go ahead and do that to the other bucket as well. This next step, we're going to mount the uh, lid on top of the bucket, and uh, we're going to drill the hole for uh, so we can slide the buckets over the uh, conduit. And uh, so we'll go ahead and mount it down on there, make sure it's nice and snug, and everything. So, like I mentioned before, this is a uh, machine molding, so including the lid. As you can see here, there's like this little uh, nipple right here in the center, and that's the true center of this entire circle. So we're going to utilize that to uh, drill our hole. Same with the underside of the bucket. It has the same thing here. You can see the uh, uh, little centerpiece right here, so we'll use that to drill our hole to make sure everything is nice and true. Now, uh, because it's got kind of a high point, it's hard to get a center on this. So what you could do is just take some coarse sandpaper, I think this is like 50 grit, and just go ahead and sand that down, get rid of that little nipple, so we kind of get down to the lower part so it's not sticking up so much, you can kind of see that. And then take a, uh, I found it just easy enough to take an X-Acto knife blade and kind of put it right here in the center uh, the best you can, just kind of slowly work it to get yourself a center uh, hole here set up and everything kind of for your, uh, uh, for your drill and all that. All right, and we're gonna do the same thing for the other side. Uh, this one here is not as bad, at least on this bucket, but you never know, depending on manufacturer and stuff like that. But almost all of them will have a center uh, portion of it here, just because for molding and machining purposes when they're making the mold. So we'll go ahead and line that up, make sure it's nice and centered up there in the circle. There we go. And we'll go ahead and just twist around and do the same thing here. All right, and that'll at least get us started with a pilot hole so we can go ahead and drill. All right. So now what I have here is just a hole saw. Now I, I mentioned earlier that the shaft is one and one eighth inch plus about uh, three thousandths or whatever, a little bit over. So I know that when I go to drill this hole, it's not gonna really uh, fit very well on the shaft. It's gonna be a little too snug. But we'll go ahead and do this first, and I'll show you what we're going to do le later. So we'll go ahead and use a hole saw. You can use also a spade bit, by the way. If you got one and eight spade bit, it works the same way. So you just go ahead, and we're just going to just punch this in here, okay? And then just go ahead and cut it out. There we go. So now we've got a reasonably, really well-centered hole here, okay? Now we're going to flip it over, basically do the same thing for the bottom side here. Get it kind of lined up here the best we can. i kind of show you here. Ah, get in there. There we go. Pretty close to center there. All right, maybe just a teeny bit off. So now we got that drilled. Now I know it's not going to fit through the shaft. There's always just a little bit uh, extra. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my uh, X-Acto knife and I'm just going to excess here on the side here. I'm just going to just kind of peel off a little excess just to kind of take the uh, few thousandths off to get it centered up because that's all we need. Okay. We'll do the same thing with the back side too. I'm just going to kind of peel it off. And then we'll be ready to mount it up onto the uh, onto the shaft and all that. So, all right. So you're gonna do the same for both buckets. All right. So now we have our two buckets here. You can see that they're sitting on the shaft. Now we have something to work here. You can see as I'm kind of spinning things around, everything's sitting here nice and true. Spinning the whole shaft around, everybody's spinning nice and true. So this, if we can maintain this, we'll have a nice true spinning uh, trommel when we get done. So. Now the next step is to determine where are we going to cut these buckets and where we're going to insert the screen. The screen we have is two feet long, okay, so we've got to figure out about where we're going to do it. Now I just measured this uh, bucket from lid to bottom, it's about 14 and a quarter inches, okay. So, and I figure if we cut the bucket somewhere in here, uh, we're going to need some room for the uh, 
cross bolts, those little uh, 12 inch uh, thread rods that need to go inside here. So we're going to need a little bit of room, wiggle room here. So for them. So what we're going to do is just approximately, probably start from the bottom, it's easier to measure. Uh, we'll probably take off about, uh, right about at 8 inches from the bottom up. Okay, and that'll give us plenty of room, so we want at least a 1 inch overlap onto the plastic uh, for our screen. And then we have at least a little bit extra wiggle room here to do other things and all that. So let's go ahead and get started with that. What we're going to do is just take your uh, carpenter uh, uh, square here and just set it up here and move this out of the way. And we're just going to line this up. And we're just going to put a whole bunch of uh, little marks here at, on the end. And uh, let me just get the Sharpie going here. All right. And we're just going to just put a little mark here. Just going to move this around here a little bit. Put another mark. Because eventually what we're doing here is we're just marking off 8 inches. Okay. And uh, to make a true circle, what we're going to do is we're just going to put some masking tape. And we're going to use these marks to line the tape up with. And that will give us a little bit of a, a, a you know, track that when we go to cut the plastic with a saw, we'll keep it pretty straight for the most part. So, yeah, we'll just, oops. There we go. And we're just going to just make this all the way around. Make these little marks. Make sure we're nice and straight here. And I'll just make it easier when we go to lay the tape up. That will be fairly straight. Looks like we're almost there. And probably one more right about there. Good. All right. So now after this, we'll go ahead and wrap this with some tape. So that'll mark the edge where we're going to cut. Okay, we have the tape on both buckets. And this is the line over here that we're going to be cutting on the inside. And then out here on the outside is the other end. It just so happens this masking tape is one inch wide, which will be perfect when we lay up the screen because we want just about a one inch overlap on the plastic with the, with the screen. Now the other thing I want to mention too is I like to look at my trommel as direction of flow. So kind of going from left to right, I like this to be the intake of the material and then this to be the exit over here. So, and along with that, I also know that my motor turns a certain direction. So my motor is going to be mounted on the exit side, okay? And I just know by the way it's set up and everything, that's going to be rotating clockwise. So I know my rotation is going this way, all right, over the top. So what I'll do is, if, just for a reference, is go ahead and just kind of mark an arrow, you know, on your bucket so you know which way everything is going so you have some direction. Now with that... That's really key when it comes to putting the screen on, okay? So when you put the screen on, what you want is that if, the if it's going that direction, okay, you want the trailing edge of this screen to be on the inside, okay? Because what will happen is if you have it on the outside, as the rock is rolling around, okay, so remember this is now going to be upside down, is the rock is going to roll off this way, okay? If you have it the other direction, have this on the inside, the rocks are going to collide with that edge and it's going to bend it up and mangle it and everything else and after time you're going to have to get in there and repair it and everything else. So it's better to let the rocks roll off this trailing edge and that's really key. So what we're going to do is just kind of lap this screen over here like that and I'll show you here in just a second how we're going to mount this thing up. Okay, now we're ready to cut the bucket. The uh, only thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut a line along this edge here, but I'm going to stop short uh, right before this uh, cross line on, on here, and I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap connected. So I'm not going to completely cut the bucket all the way off. And I'm going to do this for every little section here. I'm going to leave a uh, all four points here, a little bit of a gap, and this will help hold the bucket, keep everything nice and straight and true. Now, I'm not going to cut this bucket just yet, so I'm only going to work on this one. We're going to leave this one alone for right now, and I'll show you later on why, okay? So anyhow, we'll go ahead and get started, and we'll just kind of cut the edges and everything and kind of go from there. So it gets a little noisy. This is, by the way, a great saw, this little angle saw, for help cutting the buckets.
Okay, the next step is mounting the screen to this side. So we're going to bring our screen over here, and remember we're going to have the trailing edge on the inside. Our direction is this way. So what I like to do is I like to leave, have at least a one inch overlap when we get the screen completely done. So what I'm going to do is because these are quarter inch marks, I can actually measure this out. So I'm going to leave myself approximately uh, one inch overhang over the edge of you know my line here. So what I'm doing here is I'm just lining up this, uh, this screen over the tape. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little screw in here. And by the way, I forgot to mention earlier about getting these little half inch by eight uh, self tapping screws because these really work handy, especially when we're putting this all together. Once we get all this all anchored down and everything, then we'll replace all these little screws with the bolts. You can leave the screws in if you want, but uh, I figure they'll eventually wiggle themselves free. So we're going to go ahead and tap this in. I try to line it up so it's right up against the uh, right. There we go right up against the line here. So my center of my square is kind of coming in the center of this line here, all right? And so that's gonna be key in terms of alignment when we get down at the other end here of the trommel. So now I'm just gonna roll it around. I wanna keep the screen as tight as I possibly can. So I'm just gonna roll it around, okay? And I'm gonna come up to my next mark here. And because where I'm mounting this, it's not gonna be perfectly right on but it's going to be close enough. So we're just going to mount this on there. You want to keep the screen nice and tight around the edge. You don't want to let it poof out on you or anything like that. And then we'll go ahead and, and mount another uh, screw in there. And so we'll just do this all the way around the entire uh, circumference. So we're just going to stick this screw in here. And you notice I'm kind of putting it on the inside here a little bit. So, uh, there we go. okay. Yeah. So now we have a nice tight connection all the way around and everything. There's no slack or anything like that. Now eventually later on we'll put more screws in here for better support. But right now this is just to anchor it down. Notice it's kind of lined up with the tape here. So we're keeping it nice and true. So we're going to go ahead and continue on with the other, with the other two uh, uh, marks here and put down some anchors. So that way at least we have the screen kind of running around in a circumference. The screws are in now, and you see how tight we have it wrapped around the bucket here until we come up here to the two end pieces. All right. Now, you can see that we're pretty well lined up over here on this side, and we can go ahead and match up the squares and line everything up and go ahead and tap in the screws, and basically we would be done. In other words, we cut out the uh, buckets here. But uh, let's take it a step further, and I'll explain why. Let's, instead of uh, leaving the screen on the outside on this end, what we want to do is put the screen on the inside because as the material is flowing through here, it's going to get hung up if the screen is on the outside. Okay, you're going to get rocks and uh, vegetation all jammed in there and it's going to pucker up and everything else. It's going to be a real mess and you'll be constantly cleaning it out and everything. So what I'm thinking is going ahead and cutting over here on this line and, uh, and getting the screen to go on to the inside of this bucket. Now we still have this bucket over here, it's still attached and it's still holding everything through. So what we'll do is we'll completely cut this bucket section off, okay? So the only thing that's going to be keeping this center true is this lid right here. So we'll go ahead and work on that and then we'll, we'll scrunch the, uh, the screen so it'll actually fit to the inside just to make it a little cleaner, okay? Now before we make this uh, end piece onto the screen, uh, what I did here first is I took uh, some duct tape here and kind of pulled the, uh, the screen in a little bit so it kind of coned down and put some duct tape on here to help support it. Also what I did is um, I put some uh, masking tape on the edge so that way I have a, a lip to match up with this lip along the way so I know it will be maintained a true uh, distance and all that. So I'm basically using three squares and I'll put my screws through the, um, through the uh, center square here. Now before we uh, uh, put all this together, I, I forgot to mention in the last segment that um, you notice that when I cut this plastic bucket, I actually cut 
on the inside uh, on the inside instead of the outside like I did on the previous uh, over here okay so um, the reason why is that the bucket as you can tell you kind of look at it, you can see it has a taper to it okay so what I wanted to do is to cut the outside so I have a little bit wider surface here to deal with so this can insert a little easier now the other thing too is that this um, has about a sixteenth of an inch thickness along the rim here so what we can do is uh, take our Dremel tool and basically kind of trim trim down the edge here so that way it just makes it easier to feed the metal into it because it cleans it up so if we just sand this down all the way around then that will make it a lot easier for it to fit in there okay we completed sanding down the edge here so we have a nice smooth knife edge to allow the uh, screen to slip over makes it a lot easier so we'll go ahead and pop this guy on okay and we'll just go ahead and kind of catch one edge of the screen lip and everything we'll just kind of gently just slowly pull all the little sections on the inside until we get the thing to made in here and uh, there we are now once we get it in here we'll go ahead and, and put some screws around the uh, edges here to help hold it to the inside and uh, we'll actually take these screws and we'll uh, put them on the inside putting out so that way these have a little bit of an anchor another point I want to bring up before we mount the end piece onto the screen is that we also want to line these two end sections up with each other so if you see where your uh, bucket handle uh, holes went right here you want to line that up so it's fairly close and then what you're going to do is you're going to see where one of our marks that we made on all four points and everything you want to try to get that to line up all the way with this point back here you can see the serrier truss here so what you want to do is kind of get down there and eyeball it and so therefore everything is lined up so I'll just kind of zoom in here so you can kind of see what I'm doing here we'll bring it in a little bit closer and you can kind of see the in way over here where this point is and this line and if you can you can kind of use this screen as a reference line to make sure that this is all lined up perfectly okay and this will be key especially when we start to put in the uh, cross members and all that and mounting the shaft on it that way everything will be pretty close to true and it'll reduce any kind of binding problems and everything else so make sure this is all lined up first and then we'll go ahead and put the screws in okay now we're ready to put the screws in so we'll just kind of start here at the bottom what I did is I'll lift this up so you can kind of see it a little better is I marked about where I'm gonna put this lined up with a marker here and then I put a little pilot hole in there so I know where I'm gonna mount my screw and even though this uh, inside lip here is a little bit of a pain in the butt to work with so I'll go ahead and just kind of put this screw in here and this will just kind of get that started and uh, we'll just screw this in we don't have to screw it in really tight, but just kind of just screw it in gently for right now because we may have to make a little bit of adjustments in here in a minute. So anyhow, we'll just go ahead and spin this around and like I say, add another pilot hole. It might be a little off. Yeah, it's a little off. Okay, so we'll go ahead and make sure that our uh, rim is pretty well lined up here and then we'll go ahead and put in another screw. We can always make a little adjustments as we're going along. So that way uh, we can keep the screen in here pretty pretty tight. So I'll go ahead and just kind of set that in there. Okay, we got our screen mounted in here. Got all the screws in and all that. And uh, it's actually starting to look pretty good. And we can kind of just spin it around here and just kind of show you that we've got a pretty good uh, screen. It's maybe just a little bit off because just a little imperfections in the screen itself. But you see we've got a pretty good true motion going here. So we'll go ahead and put the lid back on and then we'll move on to the next step which will be uh, actually changing out all these little uh, self-tapping screws with the uh, quarter 20 bolts that we uh, put in so we'll go ahead and pop this on by the way you notice that when I put this thing on it just mounts right up there nice and perfectly true so you can see we got a pretty good turning trommel here and all that so it's looking pretty good so far all right before we mount the bolts we're gonna 
add a couple extra remarks here. So I'm just going to take my tape measure here, and we're going to add a couple other uh, bolt holes for the uh, the trommel here. So we're going to just measure the distance between here, which is about nine inches. So I'm just going to make a mark here at about four and a half, right in here, where we're going to kind of put another bolt. So we'll just mark that. All right, and then we're just going to work our way around the uh, the trommel. Marking kind of the in between point. There's about four and a half, so roughly right about there. It doesn't have to be perfectly accurate, but as long as it's kind of in that zone, it'll be just fine. In fact, I, so we'll go ahead and pop the lid off here and get started. And take this thing off. And we're Trommel, of course, is still maintaining true because we still have this bucket part in here, and plus we have the lid on the other side, so we're still maintaining a true pattern here until we get everything all done. So we'll go ahead and uh, take out uh, at least one of the uh, screws here, so we'll back that out. Okay, and then we got the corresponding hole. So go ahead and just use a, a quarter-inch drill bit and go ahead and just punch a hole through here. And we want to try to get it in the center here as best we can. So we'll just kind of have to... Alright. And we'll go ahead and take a uh, corresponding washer, uh, another washer and a nut. We'll just slip our hand through here. And it's kind of a snug fit. So just kind of squeeze it on through. There we go. There we are. And we'll throw the other washer on top of there. And then we'll go ahead and screw it on. And for right now, I'm just going to hand fit that. And then later on, we'll come back with a little socket wrench and just kind of snug it down a little better. So we'll just go ahead and continue the process. We'll go through all these individual holes here until we get every one of them in. Okay, just finished running off the last nut here. And by the way, there's actually nine um, bolts and nuts around here because I forgot about the little overlap here for the screen. So we'll go ahead and anchor that down. So we'll go ahead and take all these uh, uh, nuts here and we'll just kind of snug them down real good. They don't have to be super tight, but just so they're, they're super, so they're firm enough and all that. And then later on, once we're satisfied with our position on all these, and we can always take a little bit of Loctite and put a little drop on each one of these to prevent that from uh, prevent it from coming back out. All right, so we're ready to get started on this end. We'll go ahead and back these screws out and do the same thing. So I've already put the lid on the other side, so we'll go ahead and pop the lid off of this. So that way, the other side kind of keeps it all well maintained, keeps it all straight while we're doing this. All right. Very good. So we can just go ahead and just kind of pick a spot wherever you want to get started. Also, by the way, I also have uh, the halfway segments in here too as well, so we're all set and good to go. So we'll go ahead and just get started. We'll just back out one of the screws here. And unfortunately, we really can't see the screen mesh, but hopefully everything is holding good. We'll just go ahead and punch our hole right through here. Already got a little pilot hole started. There we go. And we'll do the basically the same thing. Going to need uh, nine uh, bolts and nuts and a set of 10 washers. So let's we'll go ahead and feed that through there. And it's going to get a little bit of a snug fit there. Put a washer on the inside, washer on the outside, and a corresponding nut. And again, like I say, we'll go ahead and just kind of snug them in hand tight for right now, and because just in case we need to make a little tweaking or adjustments, and we'll go ahead and finish this off and, and back out these screws and uh, put the bolts in all the way around. Okay, we got all of our nuts and bolts mounted in here, and they're all snug down and everything, and it's looking pretty good. In fact, it's starting to kind of look like a trommel. You can see it's turning pretty well. Uh, looks pretty smooth so far. So now the next step is to actually bind the screen together. Okay, there's two ways of doing this. One is to simply just 
cut off the edge here of the screen and then the corresponding little spiky pieces of wire sticking up, you can take your needle nose pliers and kind of curl them down and hook them to the underside here so that way you can hook on. And it's a tedious process but it looks really neat if you want to go all the way down the line. It's going to be very time consuming. Or the other way that's a little quicker is just simply just taking some wire here. I've just got uh, this is like 22 gauge uh, soft wire and I just cut it into little bitty segments and what I've done here is I've just kind of made like a little bit of a hook here. So, and in fact, when we're doing this, I like to start in the middle and work my way outward, okay? So that way uh, you don't end up with anything bunching up. So, and what I like to do is get close to the trailing edge, which is, is kind of on the underside of this. So I want to try to hook near the edge of that. And I'm just going to just put this wire in here, and I'm just going to grab like maybe two, three squares, something like that and just kind of bring them out so they're kind of together here. All right. And then I'm just going to just kind of, <clears throat> you can see how they're just kind of just looping around here. So I'm just going to kind of pull it snug. Okay. And then at one end, I'm just going to kind of just tie it. Okay. And it doesn't have to be like, you don't have to torque it on tight or anything, but uh, just kind of just wind it up here a little bit. And that just kind of brings these two screens together and all. And so now you have the ends that are sitting here. You can finish winding those up if you want. Okay. And then just simply just taking a pair of uh, cutters and just uh, snip off the ends. Okay. And that's really all you need. And so you only have to do this like about every, oh, uh, two or three inches along the way. Put a little segment in here. And that will help snug these two screens together and make it look really good. Okay, we have all the uh, wires tied in here to close the seam line of the screen here. Everything's looking really good. So we can go ahead and peel the tape off of here that's holding it. And we can also remove the tape that's on the ends here as well. And uh, move on to the next phase here. Okay, in this segment we're going to go ahead and cut the... Uh, uh, bucket out that's hanging in here so we'll cut off these little segments that are in here that we've marked and everything and also what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a slit down this way on about at least two halves and that way it'll help cause the bucket to uh, collapse so that way we can prolapse it out or push it through the other side so we'll go ahead and just kind of get started we'll go ahead and just take this whole saw the only reason why I'm, uh, I've got it backwards like this is because I'm right-handed just easier for me to work on it from this angle here. So we'll go ahead and get started cutting this. Now the bucket is loose, so we're ready to go ahead and push it on out and everything. So we'll just take our uh, steel conduit pipe and just kind of push it down in here. And we'll just go ahead and shove it out the other far end here. There we go. Boom. Done. So now this piece is out. And so there, here we go. We've got ourselves a trommel. Okay, now that we have everything all lined up, we're going to go ahead and mark where we're going to put our holes for the uh, threaded rods. Okay, so on this one here, it measures starting here from the end to the rim. It looks like it's three inches. Okay, so what I want to do is put the um, holes uh, approximately a half inch from here for the for one side and probably an inch on the on the on the one at 90 degrees so if I'll go ahead and just mark this off right here okay that's where I'm going to make my pilot hole okay and I'm going to spin this around to a hundred I'll flip around to 180 degrees so I know that it's going to be this corresponding segment here and we'll just kind of set it up the same way, three inches roughly. I'm trying to juggle this while I'm also trying to work around the camera. And mark that, okay? Now the other segments will be here, and we'll make those into uh, about one inch from the, from the end of this ruler. So that way there'll be a half inch gap between the two. So we'll go ahead and mark that right about there. And we'll spin it around to the other corresponding side. This might get a little tricky because of the, you know, let's flip around this way. Might get a little tricky here, so we'll just get right close to the three inches. 
and we'll mark it right here okay very good so we'll go ahead and punch those holes through for the thread rod now on the other side uh, we'll show you that here I'll just move this over. okay for the other side it's going to be a little different uh, because we had shortened this segment right here so what we're going to do is we're going to utilize um, this bolt hole actually for one of the uh, threaded rods to go through and correspondingly on the other side as well and then so this measures about three eighths all right and then what we're going to do is uh, going to change this other one here uh, at 90 degrees okay so instead of being at 3 8 we're going to make this from this rim all the way out be one inch okay and that's where we'll put our hole for that so we'll do the same thing correspondingly 180 degrees on the other side so with that let's go ahead and punch some holes as a prelude to uh, punching the holes I always like to kind of get a little pilot hole started so if you have your exacto knife uh, just kind of punch that hole there it makes it a little easier especially because we're working on um, you know kind of a round surface it's plastic so the bit has a tendency to migrate so if we get the get a little pilot hole started with our exacto knife blade then that'll just make it a lot easier the rod go ahead and insert it through the hole and let it feed through the other side and we'll go ahead and just kind of whoops this guy's out a little bit feed the other one through as well okay now that we got that done we will just move this out a little bit there we go and go ahead and put another corresponding washer and nut on this side And we'll just kind of snug them in here a little bit. They don't have to be super tight, just uh, just enough to, you know, just to hang there and all that. We'll do the same on this one here too as well. Come here, come on. Sorry about that. Things get a little wild sometimes. There you go. All right, so now we have the uh, cross beam in here, as you can see. And that's what we're gonna have our shaft go right through here. So we'll go ahead and do the same for the other side as well, okay? Okay, now we're looking down the barrel of the trommel and just to see how well we're lined up. As you can see, I'm just kind of hand holding this and you can see that they're fairly close. Now, if I shift it a little bit, you can see that it's just a teeny bit off, like maybe, uh, a half a degree maybe a sixteenth of an inch and uh, if I shift the other way you can kind of see the vertical one just being off a tiny bit okay and then if we kind of change the angle here about the same thing here you see how we're just a teeny bit off but you know my gosh for the most part we're pretty much gonna be right on especially after we drill the holes and everything so this is actually looking pretty good Okay, now it's time to measure out uh, where we're going to put our holes in the shaft here. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. Uh, one way is to simply just take a tape measure and just feed it through the trommel, okay? And for instance, I'm going to grab the outer bolts on each side here, and I can just pull this in and look at the measurement. I can just kind of look in here, and it measures at 26 inches. So I know that the distance from here to there is 26 inches minus an eighth of an inch because of the thickness of the bolt because the tape measure is grabbing the outer part of the bolt so it'll basically be 25 and 7 eighths okay and you can do the same thing for the other one too and just mark it off measure it mark it off as well and do basically the same thing and then once you have those measurements you can bring it out here to the shaft and go ahead and put them on right here where, where you're going to mark it so you know where the inner inner uh, circle is and the outer circle Okay, we got our rod back on our jig here, 
and we have our marks. I don't know if you can see it in the camera or not, but there's our little mark. So how we're gonna uh, make sure we get the full circumference here is we're just gonna put some wide tape on here. That'll kind of help stabilize it and uh, uh, give us a nice round curve. So we're just gonna put it right up against the mark and leave a little bit of room for the, the pen itself. And if we roll this thing around, it should come all the way around to the other side without over without any kind of lapping on either side of this, and that way we know we have a true, uh, you know, line all the way around. And we'll do the same to the other one here too as well. So we'll put this right along here. Make sure it looks okay. We got our tapes in place and everything on both sides. And so now we'll go ahead and uh, mark the uh, points where we're going to drill. And what I did is I created this template, and it's just made out of a piece of cardboard. Uh, I just drew some cross lines in it and everything. Uh, that'll help us uh, set up our drill holes. And this is, you know, a one and one eighth uh, hole that I just cut. Uh, you know, just simple material. So we'll just slide this thing on to the shaft, and we'll just bring this right up here to the uh, the first tape, and we'll just set it here for right now. Now the next thing what we're going to do is we don't want this pipe turning while we're doing these measurements and putting stuff on because otherwise it's going to get all out of whack and everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to anchor the pipe down so it doesn't move anywhere for this, uh, this next setup. So I'm just going to set it in here and I'm just going to bring some masking tape over the top, kind of set it on here pretty tight, whoops, set it on here pretty tight so it doesn't go anywhere. There we go. Okay, and that's locked on there pretty secure, and we'll do the same over here to this side as well. So that way this bad boy doesn't go anywhere. Anchor it down. Okay, now that's all locked in. Now the next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up so like my uh, my alignment's going to be up and down and side to side, okay, at 90 degrees. So with that, I'll, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sight down here. So I'll kind of show you that. Okay, we're kind of looking down the barrel here of the shaft, and you can see my alignment tool here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of set it up so it's going to be as close as I can. I want to make sure that this is horizontal to this piece of wood back here. That kind of gives me a an idea so I'm just gonna make a little adjustment come back here kind of eyeball it tweak it a little bit more until we get it just about right that seems like it's getting pretty close yeah almost there just a little bit more just a little bit a little bit touch more there we go and let's see yeah I think I went over a little bit just gonna back it up just a tiny bit and hopefully that'll get everything lined up nice and straight. It looks pretty good now. Yep, good. Okay, and from there, what I can do is I can go ahead and mark my points. Okay, from here, I have uh, the widest angle out on the outside, and that's the vertical. So I can go ahead and just simply get straight down on top of it. Mark where I'm going to mark my point there. And also get on the underside here. A little tricky. A little tricky. Just kind of mark where I'm going to make my other drill hole. Now I also know that uh, that I'm going to do the same for the uh, the other side. So I'm going to get down here and kind of eyeball it. Looks pretty good. And same with the other side, too. Okay, so that handles that one. Now what I'm going to do is, I don't know if I budged that a little bit, but I'm going to slide this up to the other side, and we'll go ahead and attach the, or do the same thing, mark the uh, points on this section right here, basically doing the same thing. Next, we can go ahead and, and tap a uh, small punch here where we're going to make our drill. What we're going to do first, we're just going to drill some pilot holes first. And we're just going to tap it gently. We don't need to really whack it hard because we certainly don't want to bend the shaft or anything. 
And we can, by the way, go ahead and untape everything so we can move things around. Oh, there we go. All right, sorry about that. So I'm just going to roll this around and just kind of tap. All right, we're going to make our hole. Now we don't want to drill all the way through. We just want to tap pile holes in right here where we got the measurements. Because if you try to drill all the way through, especially in a hand drill, and even with a drill press, uh, you could be slightly off on the other side. And so that's why we're just setting pilot holes for right now. So that way when we bring in the quarter inch drill, that uh, it'll uh, it'll log on to the to the pilot hole, make it a little bit easier. So that way we can drill all the way straight through with that. So right now we're just setting these holes in here, just to kind of get everything all ready. Okay, I'm going to size these holes up a little bit more. So I've got an eighth inch bit here. We're basically just going to do the same thing. Make our pilot holes a little bit larger so when we put the uh, larger bit in it'll work a little better. Okay, now we're ready for our main bit. This is a uh, 1764 uh, bit, so it's just a tiny bit larger than a quarter inch. And so we'll go ahead and punch our holes. And now, with, because we have the pilot holes on both sides, it'll be real easy just to drill all the way straight through. So at least it'll have better guidance. So we'll go ahead and just jam this in here. Now we'll just kind of feel for the pilot hole in the back here. There we go. All the way through. Do the same thing with this. Gonna feel for the pilot hole. There it is. There we got it. Okay. Okay, folks, we're in the home stretch. Now, sort of the uh, one of the last few things we need to do is put these threaded rods on and mount it, mount the uh, trommel onto it. Now what we're going to need is uh, six nuts and four washers to fit on each one of these. And each one is going to be kind of sequentially put together. So I'll show you kind of how that all happens and everything. And uh, so we'll go from there. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, we're going to take our rod here. And I've got a nut and a washer already set up here. I'm going to feed that through one of the holes here. And before I go any further, I'm going to actually, before I stick it into the, the shaft, I need to put it on a couple of other nuts and washers. So I'm going to put this uh, washer on, and I need to put on one more nut. Now this is kind of a real pain in the butt, and it's very time consuming but this is just how you're going to have to do the sequence. So you're going to have to take a lot of time just kind of spinning this rod on the shaft and everything. Because this part here is going to sandwich the uh, uh, up uh, the, uh, the bucket to the rod here. So you just got to take the time to spin that. Okay, once that nut has been threaded up a little ways, we're going to put on another nut. Okay, this nut's actually going to fit on the shaft right here. So we're going to just spin this one up until it's high enough to clear. Okay, so we got the other nut on, and we're going to slide this through the shaft. Now, let me show you here, now we're getting pretty close here. And uh, so the next thing we're going to do is put on another nut that'll basically sandwich the uh, drive shaft from the other side. So I'll get this booger up here. Come on. Like I say, it's going to be time consuming and you're just going to have to be patient and just kind of work it. Okay, there we go. Just slowly putting the the nut on there. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but we'll run that on up. 
All right, I'm gonna put our next uh, nut and washer on. So we gotta put the nut on first. And these are the last two that will go on. And this will be the sandwich, so to speak, on the other side. So we're just gonna spin that on there. We're gonna put that washer on there. So that will be to the inside. Now we'll go ahead and feed it through the hole. All right, now we made it all the way through the trommel, so we're out on the other side. And we'll just make a couple of adjustments here, and then we'll go ahead and put on... That was my support there. <laughs> just took off. And we'll put one more nut on the outside here. Now, I also forgot to mention, too, that I, I put the white lid on the back trommel in the back just to kind of help hold every, the back in steady, otherwise everything's flailing around going crazy. So you can see now that we have the rod in there, okay? And so that's gonna be uh, how we're gonna adjust it. We're just gonna basically run these threads in, or these nuts in a little bit closer to the thread, okay? And run this up to sandwich it. We'll show you a little bit here in a moment. Right now we're just kinda getting things kinda loosely in place. Now the next step is to put the other rod in the other direction. Basically this rod is going to be going perpendicular to the other one and basically goes in the same way. We're just going to put on a, uh, another washer and a nut and thread this thing on. That's going to be our sandwich for the other one side here. All right. And then we'll go ahead and put the other nut on as well, because that's going to be the nut that's going to lock down onto the, the main shaft. Okay, we got our threaded rod through here, so we'll finally put on the last nut and uh, washer on the outside and then we'll get everything lined up here looking pretty darn good okay okay so now we got the shafts in here it looks like it's fitting pretty nice so what we're gonna do is we're gonna lock these inner nuts that are up against the main shaft we're gonna lock these down so that way it secures it now, if for some reason the trommel is not spinning a true circle, what we're going to do is keep these locked and we'll make the adjustments with the outer nuts and washers, okay, to center it up better. So we're going to go ahead and just hit this with a wrench. We're just going to go ahead and lock these down so they're nice and snug onto the shaft. Might even have to hold the shaft a little bit. Okay, so now it just kind of snugs them down a little bit. They're not really torqued down very tight, but just close enough. All right, so now we're uh, pretty close, and now it's just a matter of just tightening the uh, nuts and bolts that are on the outer part of the bucket here to cinch it up. Got all the uh, bolts tied down here and locked and everything. And as you can tell, we're turning a pretty decent circle here, so it's not too bad. So now we'll go ahead and take care of the other side and get it uh, mounted up. All right, so we got the trommel all bolted down. Everything's all nice and snug at both ends and everything. So once you get it all taken care of, you can uh, go ahead and take like a carpenter square, line it up against the trommel, and that way you can just kind of spin it around just to see if there's any imperfections or not that need just a little bit of adjusting and things of that sort. But as you can see, this is actually looking pretty darn good. Uh, it's pretty straight for the most part. So this was the hardest part of the trommel build. Now that we have this all nice and straight and everything, the rest of it will come a lot easier. So this pretty much concludes uh, this first segment of a three-part series on our trommel build. Now if you have any questions or you have any comments or suggestions, go ahead and put them in the comments section down below and we'll get a little collaboration going back and forth. So the next two videos, I'm gonna talk more about the upper wash plant and how that's all put together. And then the third video, we'll discuss more about the dewatering trommel. So we'll see you on the next ones. Thank you.